Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of It's Not Only Football, Friday Night Lights and Beyond. My name is Scott Porter, and I am joined by... Uh, Zach Guilford, a.k.a. Matt Saracen. May Whitman, a.k.a. the favorite of the guest that's about to come on. Yes. Uh, today is our first guest, and he is pretty much the only man that the three of us all agreed should be the first guest of this pod. Um you may know him from several of television's greatest shows of all time. Um, Jason Kadams, writer, creator, producer, and actor. Don't think we didn't see you in the second uh, episode yeah. of Friday Night Lights hiding <laughs> in the Alamo Freeze. Uh, everybody, scene. Jason Kadams is here with us today. Jason, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Oh, loud? my God, guys. <laughs> So great to see you guys. Yay. This is cool what you're doing. And thank you. This is an honor. I'm your first guest. Hell yeah. Our first guest. Oh, come Maybe on. Last. We wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Let's just yeah. start at the top. Like, how did you get your start just in the industry as a whole, period? Oh, okay. Well, I was, um, you know, I started by writing plays after I graduated college. I was like, that's, I you know, discovered late in my college, you know, um, like, I think it was like my last semester of college, I took a playwriting class, I was like, Oh, this is what I want to do. And I started playing, uh, writing plays, I lived in New York. And so I just started, you know, doing it, I started like, you know, getting in submitting my plays and getting into playwriting groups and, you know, theater groups and all that stuff. And then um, years after being in New York, um, as a sort of struggling playwright and working, I got a call from um, out of the blue from Ed Zwick's office, who had read one of my plays, um, you know, in in a randomly. It's not like I submitted it to him or and he, and he called me up and he said, I read this play of yours and I liked it. I said, thank you. He said, do you know who I am? I said, no, I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> and he said, well, by way of resume, I directed a movie called Glory, and I created a television show called 30-something. I said, okay, I think you can stop there. No, actually, I, mean, I had an audition with him once, and he told me, he's like, you know I discovered Kadams, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, really? I, I was like, you did? I didn't know this story. His big claim to fame. Yeah, yeah now that he's claiming you. Really, and Yeah, well, I have Ed Zwick to thank. He then put me on a show that he was doing with uh, Winnie Holtzman called My So-Called Life. Oh, my Winnie favorite Holtzman. show of all time. I thought, I, I, well, wait, I thought Friday Night Lights was your favorite show. Yeah, what's well, going on, we right? Don't, we just, that's a disclaimer. We, it's, that's always my favorite show of all time, but then it's like anything else I say is it's, just it's obviously secondary. Yeah, it goes okay. without saying. But my second favorite show, truly, that show meant the universe to me growing up. It was like I'd never seen such like accurate portrayal of like youth and teenage growing up. I feel like it had always been and sort of like very clearly adults sort of trying to give voice to like teens and youth and mm-hmm. that felt so genuine and real and it wasn't condescending it just no thank I you felt for the that. same way I loved that show and I do remember you know after we shot the pilot and they told us that you were going to come on and be our showrunner I was like wait we got my so called life like this show's <laughs> going to be that, like that's perfect yes thank you who's going to be the voiceover <laughs> yeah. who's going to be <laughs> who's going to be in- but that was like sort of my became my um, almost like my graduate school. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd never been on a set before um, and didn't really know how television worked. So I got to sort of learn how to do it. But I mean, the lucky thing is I was really learning from the best. And I think the biggest lesson that I learned on on, on my so-called life was, that, you know, at the time, you know, now, like everybody looks at television with with. Um, with the respect that it, television deserves. But back then, television was like, so it was like considered less than everything else. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, and they, I just happened to be working with these people who saw television as, as this sort of high art. Well, I feel like the, for a while, the thing was like, we're selling laundry detergent. Like that was like a term I heard a lot in TV. I was like, yeah. what? No, yeah. I mean, a TV show. Yeah. <laughs> right. And look at television now. Look I mean, at that, it now. That was still happening. Now everybody even, who, yeah, everybody, for it. everybody wants to now. Like everybody who would never, who would own features only, never do TV. 
It, or Susan like Sarandon all, is yeah. on Fox said, and on. Hillary yeah. Swank is leading a show mm-hmm. and yeah it's like Oscar award winners just now everywhere. Now people are like I don't do movies. I'm not interested in doing a little stupid indie movie. Well now I'm just worried that they're going to take all my TV stuff. Like I, can you please leave my TV stuff alone? I don't have much outside of this quarter of the world. I you know go back to winning Oscars please. I would like to you know I'd like to exist on television a little while longer. I got two kids now. I, I got to pay for college. So please, you know, stay out of my playground. I didn't realize that you were a story. I really just always thought you were the showrunner on my so called. <laughs> I was just like, Cadence must have run that show. I'm glad you didn't know until now. Once you left my so-called life or once my so-called life didn't uh, just criminally, (laughs) criminally not, you know, continue on. It's crazy that that show only did. Why? Why did that happen? Um, You know, it was the only time, you know how like nobody, like, you know, network executives never, it's never there. You know, when things are successful, they're, they're, it's always there. They're they're doing. Yes. And when things don't work, it, it's never their fault. Yes. It was the only time I've ever heard the person who ran ABC at the time, several years later, after he left ABC, <clears throat> said it was the biggest mistake of his career not wow. to bring that show back. I've never, never ever heard anybody else say that. After you left my so called life, though, uh, well, we're just going to say that after after yeah. my so called <laughs> yes. life ended. Uh, what was next for you? What what happened before Friday Night Lights? Well, um, you know, I did a show with I did. Well, I, I wrote a co-wrote a movie with my friend Matt Reeves, who has gone on to do incredible, incredible work. And uh, that was called The Paul Bearer. And we co-wrote that together. And I made that. And then while I was making that show is when I found out that My So-Called Life was not coming back. And Ed Zwick called and said, would you want to um, create a show? Um, sort of like what he did with with Winnie. And so I did a show that was a show called Relativity. Th- that show only lasts one season, but it, it sort of thrust me from being a, basically like a writer on a show to being a showrunner. And that's when I started showrunning, which was which was like, it's an unusual path. I mean, usually you would staff on a lot of shows before you start um running shows um how did that feel the difference like because you know for those listening and even for me i'm like i don't really know the ins and outs of how different and how big of a leap that is and like what does it feel like to show oh it's a completely different being a showrunner is the the, being a showrunner it's a completely different thing than being um on staff of the show um and being a showrunner you're basically doing every you're you're doing every aspect of it so you come in you'll you know first of all if if you're starting a show you'll pitch it so i had you know with that show i pitched it um set it up wrote the pilot you then cast it you you know hire your writing staff you know, you, you know you're doing everything you're in the editing room you're in the mix on the mixing stage so i know that when you you were like an overall deal or something. You weren't necessarily looking to show run a show when you came on to Friday Night Lights, correct? The so Friday Night Lights, I had just been yeah. So what happened was I had uh, been on a, an overall deal at twentieth, and that overall deal was ending. Um, was Roswell a part of that? Ros, I did Relativity, which was my first show. I did Roswell under that show. I got to give a whoop whoop to Roswell. I loved. Roswell. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah. Moving okay. on. <laughs> so then, so then I was, I was kind of like, you know, done with the deal, and I was trying to, I was sort of thinking about, okay, I want to not be, uh, I want to spend a year, sort of figuring out what I want to do now. You just want to like sort of take a step back. Um, so I wasn't looking to um, do a show, and I ran into David Nevins, who at the time was the um, I don't know what he was. I don't know what he title. was, but he was at Imagine. He was at Imagine. <laughs> Ron, <laughs> was, Imagine. was that Ron Howard's and, um, yeah, yeah. He was kind of the head of the television um, uh, division there. And um, he said, oh, you know, he asked me, he said to me, like, um, you know, are you interested in, you know, um, running a show? And I said, no, I want to figure out what I want to do next. And he said, well, like, um, 
are you a football guy? Do you like football? No, I'm a baseball guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, look, I just did. We just did. I said, oh, did you, he said, did you ever read like, like, uh, or see the movie Friday Night Lights? And I said, no. And he said, <laughs> he well, really wanted you you're for like, this. what part of I don't like football? Did, do you uh, understand? We just did a pilot and Pete directed it. Pete Burke directed it. Would you come and watch the pilot? Um, and so I went to imagine, I watched the pilot and after the pilot, I was like, what the f- am I going to do <laughs> next year that's better than this? <laughs> that's how I got, well, that's how I wanted to get involved in Friday Nights. And then I had to, you know, kind of meet with Pete and talk to him and, you know, get his blessing. What I had to like? know what that was like, because yeah. you guys are two very different personalities, but you yeah. clearly had some sort of synergy that worked you it took was the very mantle interesting the working with pete because um so you know first of all like after i watched the pilot i i had there were like i literally had like two questions <laughs> and if i was going to get involved in the show and the two questions were what happens to jason street and the second question was will you film this show in in texas wow because it was kind of like i I watched it and I was like, well, if Street isn't paralyzed, then this is not, there's no way to make the show to be at the show as good as what this pilot it was and mm-hmm. how good the book was. Mm. It's got, it's got, you know, we have to tell the story, we have to tell a real story. And the second thing was like, you know, if we had to try, try to make this in LA or really anywhere else other than Texas, there'd be like, um, there's just be it would just You'd be driving to no Valencia way, a lot. There's just no way to yeah. make this uh, to make the show. The show was so. It was such a character culture, on the show. The mm-hmm. culture was so crucial. And by the way, I didn't even realize how crucial. Once we got there and we shot there, I was like, oh my god, you know. And so, um, so yeah, so that those are the things. And then I met with Pete, and Pete, I think. When he met me, he was like, at the beginning of the meeting, he was kind of very dubious, you know, <laughs> because I think he had heard, he was like, you know, just like, he didn't really know me from a hole in the wall. And I think he probably heard, I was, I very proudly stated how I knew nothing about football. <laughs> he was not into that, you know. This is why you're the first guest on It's Not Only Football. By Truly. The way. And, uh, yeah. And I met with him and I talked to him about what I thought the show needed to be and what you know what kind of what it was and what it needed to be and how to kind of take care of it and to make so continue to grow and make better make it better and honor what you know what the what the pilot was what the movie was what the book was and um and then that was it i mean honestly like he just he was he was he was like okay let's let's make the show and then we went to austin together and um started to you know before we were this is before we started shooting the the first season we went to austin and we um kind of he introduced me to like a bunch of you know uh um high school coaches and i went so yeah i just kind of went and like sort of saw the world um and um and that was it does having extra energy during the holiday season seem impossible well not anymore your go-to for extra energy this time of year is spark from advocare It's a great-tasting energy drink mix that's sugar-free and powered by 20 vitamins, nutrients, and minerals. With an effective amount of caffeine for an energy boost, B vitamins to support your body's natural ability to make and sustain its own energy, and neuroactive ingredients to keep you focused and alert, Spark is the perfect solution for your everyday energy needs. Especially if you're like me and you're having to check every single light bulb on those strings of lights that you're just trying to put up outside your house in the middle of the holiday season. With over 10 permanent flavors and exciting limited time flavors, there's something for everyone on your gift list. You can find your flavor of Spark and discover more products for all your health and wellness solutions at advocare.com slash FNL. Get 15% off your first order at advocare.com slash FNL today. Can I ask, like, how what 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 it was about the pilot that you saw that really made you, and and what did you want to continue? Like, what was it in there that was so like made you absolutely have to do it? And then also, like, what did you what did you really want to continue, and how did you want to take care of it? Like, what did you feel like the real core of what the show should be? Yeah. Well, what I was really drawn to was, you know, 
there was very few, you know, there was very, there were very few shows at the time, in television or movies for that matter, that really looked at a, a real small town America, you know, like small town America, and looked at a, 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 a that a show that was about uh, people that weren't privileged. You know, television was even the good television was really about privilege, mm. and, and it was it was almost like an assumption that that's what people want to see you know well you know my not, my uncle bub in nebraska he actually said that to me so it's not a completely wrong thought my uncle bub teaches i mean coaches seven on seven football in the middle of nebraska and is a superintendent of a school district that only has one school k through 12 i mean he's basically <laughs> and, yeah. and he he told me scott your show's very good but I just want to see hot doctors and lawyers do stuff I've never seen people do. I don't want to watch my life on TV, which I took as the ultimate compliment because it meant that we were we were getting collectively that right and that you right. all were were delivering on exactly what you're saying here is that that feel was so jarringly different I think from a lot of other television that was right. on air. Right. Yeah, so I thought that that that's the 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 people um, in the show and that town and that world was just so alluring to me. And I thought I could, I thought there was something I could bring to it because, you know, like what I knew was that, you know, you couldn't have, uh, a, you couldn't have like a huge football game in every episode. Mm -hmm. No, or no. Want to. No. Um, and, um, and that, so that the show had to become, um, that all of these characters that we met had to get deeper and deeper and deeper, and we had to get become invested in them. Mm. And we had to, um, um, it had to be like the story where football was in the engine the story, but ultimately the story wasn't about football. The story was about um, this, this, this town and these people and their lives. You know, I always look at, um, my my the thing that i always like the character that i always look at when i talk about the evolution of the show is tyra yes she's my favorite talk about her so tyra. much we're obsessed yeah. with her and in tyra tyra it was like in the um in the pilot of the show like you didn't know who really she was she was like a hot she was like this hot girl in the town. You didn't really know much about her. You didn't know who she was, where she came from, what were her dreams, you know. And um, and it was like, and then you look at the what happened to that. If you look at the whole, watch the whole series, and look at the, um, you know, her arc, and starting to like learn who she was and where she came from and her family and her, you know, her mom and her sister and, you know, her aspirations and her dreams and all that stuff. It was just really like kind of, you know, that, so to me, that was the thing that was so, and I think that was true of everybody. Like I, I look back at, like, I look at the second episode of the, of the show and there, and to me, like, um, it was kind of like one of the big moments for me was like, Oh, is this, is this series going to work? Like there was a lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> such a revered, you know, book and movie and, and, and pilot. And there's a lot of pressure. Like, Oh my God. I mean, it's like, I can totally this up, you know, you were the coach and, Taylor uh, <laughs> feeling the pressure from the time. Yeah. Well that, yeah, no, that's, that is really true. And I, I actually, that actually was really my, my way into mm. the show, like how to write the show. It's like, I think just similar to like an actor, like you have to find your way into a character. Mm. I had to find my way into like, how do I find myself in this show? I never really been to Texas. I didn't know anything about football. Mm. I was not from a small town. None of this. I really like, um, you know, like, like it wasn't like a literal version of my life at all. Um, but then I was kind of like, there was all this pressure on me to succeed and, you know, and I felt like, oh, I'm like Coach Taylor. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like he was walking in to, you know, Dylan and suddenly his star quarterback is is out. And what is he? And, and there's still like he's got nobody. He's got.
and Saracen. And then it's hey, kind of, hey, guys, come on. And then, <laughs> yes. And then, he, and then he's expected to like, but he's still expected to, you know, to win state. Mm-hmm. So what was and that so Hail I, Mary I, moment for you, though? You said in the second episode there was a scene in particular in that let you know. The second episode, the moment, the moment when Coach walks into Saracen's um, house. Oh, yes. And sees the grandmother and sees the pictures on the wall and sees what he's dealing with. I mean, it's a literally, I get, I get emotional mm-hmm. now even thinking about it. It was like... It was like to me that was like like this. Oh, this show is going to work because it was kind of like, you know, there was this kid had so much pressure on him and he was like not asking for it. He wasn't asking. He wasn't like he wasn't gunning for like streets job or anything like that. He was just kind of like like playing football, you know, and then (laughs) um, and then, you know, it's just like it's, it's like then when when. When, you know, coach walks in and sees what he's, you know, he walked in because he wanted to see who this kid was. Mm. He wanted to see like what, you know, he, his, his, you know, there was a lot riding on, 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 you know, you know, on who he was. And he didn't really ever notice this kid before, you know, Mm. and, um, and um, to me, that was like, I don't know, that was one of those moments that I felt like very like, oh, this, this, you know, this show's really going to work, you know, it's going to, we're going to, we're going to build, um, <clears throat> you know, um, we're going to, we're going to be able to like build, like, you know, to me, it's like always the, always the goal in television is like, you know, you do a pilot and so much goes into the pilot. And a lot of people are like, always like, Oh, you know, how do we keep up to the level of the pilot? But to me, the goal is always like the show, the pilot should be like, the place that you grow from, mm. right, right. That the show should keep deepening and deepening and deepening, and and that's one of the things I'm very I'm very proud of on both of the shows uh, that were, you know, the on Friday Nights and Parenthood. They felt like the shows really continued to deepen and grow. Yeah, a big part of like the success of season one, as I'm going back and watching, is how deftly you all handle exposition in such a myriad of ways. You know, letting the audience know who Matt is by having Jason say, you know, he's different than me. He's artsy. He's, he likes to draw shows you so much about who street is and shows you so much about who Saracen is without ever having to drive that nail into the wood. It's just there when coach walks into the house and you see, you know, the image of his father is a soldier in Iraq and you tell something is a little different with his grandmother by the way she approaches coach. But you also see the adoration that these people in town have for that position on the football team. And with someone like Tyra or someone like Landry, you very quickly arm them with agency all their own that doesn't align with what the rest of the town is. I love Tyra's jadedness in the early part of season one and her confidence to make decisions all her own. And we've talked about on the show how – Characters like Tyra are so now more readily available on television. But back when Tyra was there on Friday Night Lights, it didn't seem like maybe everybody was ready for that. Like Tyra's a lead now and you all built her up to that level in the show. You handled it Mm -hmm. uh, so incredibly well over over the multiple multiple seasons of the show. What what was your favorite season to work on? I I mean, you know, they're Mm -hmm. all so incredibly different. And, oh my god! You know, this is a tough one, huh? <laughs> That's really difficult. Maybe we should start there. Like, what was season one about, or what was season two about? What was you know? Well, season one was about are are is are we going to survive the loss of Jason Street? Is this team going to survive? Is the mm-hmm. town going to survive? Still on the fence about which SUV to get? Waiting to hear the reviews? Well, I got some news. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 beat out 32 other SUVs to win Motor Trend's 2023 SUV of the year. 32. And they picked us. And it's the first time they've ever chosen an all-electric vehicle for this award. So, not only does it deliver on utility, it also has all the benefits of being electric. I'd say that's a win-win. And there's more. 
To quote Motor Trend directly, they said the Ionic 5 is a game-changing rethink of what an SUV can be, and that in this year's incredibly competitive crop of SUV of the year contenders, this Hyundai was well ahead of the pack. Those are their words, not mine. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The reviews are in, and they are spectacular. The Hyundai Ionic 5, Motor Trend's 2023 SUV of the year. When it comes to award-winning driving, we're thinking of every mile. Hyundai, it's your journey. Available in limited quantities and select states only. Did you all know uh, in that season where it was trying to deal with like the loss of street that they were going to win state? Oh, my God. You one? told me this. You told me this once. You told me the story. I did? What did I say? Because I don't you remember. Were, you told me that you didn't know. You told me that it was like you every episode that came more and more, oh, yeah. you were kind of like, Jesus, I don't know if we're going to do this, if we're going to win this or not. Like it kind of it came down to the last few episodes before that you kind of decided. Is that right? Right. Yeah. Well, it was just, it was, it was very, it was really hard to, yes, it was really hard to decide. And we had a lots of, you know, writer's room, you know, discussion. About My it. mind is blown right now. Not know, like knowing that you all did not know, like what are you, episode 18, still trying to figure it out if, whether we win state or not. It's not about that. Well, you know, it's pretty, that's the one thing that's kind of like, you know, you can really leave to the last yeah. minute. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, but I mean, it was kind of, do they get to state? That was what, you know, we mm. didn't, we did know that, but then wow. what was going to happen? I remember that's, when I read it and I was like, we win? That seems so <laughs> like TV. And you said to me, you were like, you know what we decided? And maybe, maybe my memory's off, but I feel like you told me we decided to have you win because then next year it's a different story because it's like now they are the champions. What do they right. do to defend it? What happens to this team now? If you lost, it's like we're just fighting for the championship again. And I was like, oh, that's actually really – Smart. Also, right. it never felt like contrived. I never felt, I mean, uh, you know, I'm pretty like jaded and sensitive to being like, you know, manipulated by things. I mean, like, oh, this is corny or whatever. And I felt like the whole journey of getting there, I mean, God forgive me, but it's like it really was about the journey and not the destination. And it was one of those things, though, that even even watching that, it never felt like I, I never was like, oh, this is a cop out or anything. It, if anything, it felt like every single step that every person in the town had taken every moment of growth every moment of focus and energy and work and love that they dedicated towards this thing i mean i just i still it makes me emotional still thinking about the moment of where they went it's like it's just so special you feel like it's it's right you know in your bones right. wait so zach didn't right. want them to win i wanted the victory i i, I definitely did yeah yeah, um, yeah. but yeah uh, you you had a you had we talk about I just want to take a slight detour we talk about the cast of the show and like all the careers that were launched from people that were on Friday Night Lights but the writers room was just stacked like the writers that were in that room with you all of the stuff that they've done after Friday Night Lights was. I mean, is still and continues to be so high level and so impactful. I have a question um, too yeah. about that, like when, as far as like casting and the way you put together sets and kind of like piggybacking on, you know, what, what is so amazing about what you do is like you are able to put together these teams of people that are so incredible and so like the top level of what they do. And then you're somehow able to make this environment of trust and like, and I, that is just something that is it's unique to you and I found in my experience and it's something that I've always looked to kind of like replicate. It's something I really took from my experience of work with working with you is like the concept of how much more special the product is when you can create an environment of trust and respect and like so how what where did what was that like how did you create that in the writer's room on the sets and and how did that kind of like influence you the casting process as well for the show right well you know oh my god um i feel <laughs> like i feel like it's kind of like how you it's really it starts with how you approach what we're doing, you know, like, what are we doing here, you know? And, you know, it's something that I kind of came to over as over the, you know, after I've, I've been doing it for a while is to really like embrace the collaborative form that we're, that we're working in, you know, mm. it's like, I could write a novel and, you know, I, you know, I don't need to listen to anybody, you know? <laughs> but it's like, it's a collaborative <laughs> form. And you, you know, like the idea of it is that, um, you know, like somebody was telling me the other day about like, 
you know, like an actor who was having, who was, you know, being difficult on set and wouldn't say the lines or whatever, you know. And I was saying like that I had, you know, I was like, well, why, you know, why? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what is it? It's not like, you know, there, it's not like there's like, you know, it's like, well, there's there's a reason. It's not like, like somebody's just not. Right. Yes. Know, Being like, obstinate not for no reason. Yeah. yeah. They're not connecting with this character. And that's, that's that. So there's got to be the, so it's like, I feel like I, I just have such a, um, um, you know, I feel like, oh my God, I get to work with all these incredibly talented people. Um, like a for, like a great example is camera operators. The, the, best, the best example are camera operators and editors. Mm-hmm. Like, un, the, those are the unsung heroes. One hundred percent. Yes. On Friday Night Lights and on Parenthood, mm-hmm. because on Parenthood we sort of came to adapt sort of a Friday Night Lights type of style of shooting. Yes. You know? um, I mean, it didn't look the same, but it was the process was the same. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's but it's like. You know, like I love, like I always love, like that. You know, the actors on 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 Friday Night Lights, or some of the actors would call the um, operators snipers because they didn't know where they were. Yes, <laughs> and it that's was, amazing. It's such, I mean, if you think of that from the standard way of doing television, it's so radical. Mm-hmm. It's such a radical idea that the actor doesn't know where the camera is. Because what that means is the actor is acting. Mm-hmm. They're in a scene with other actors and real moments are are being revealed. And then op- the cameras are somewhere and they're capturing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, the, the, but the, the actors are not like, okay, you know, like, you know, um, you know, like, uh, what size are we? Whatever, you know. Blah, blah, blah. You, you Turning know, around. Like, I still, they'll, they'll tell me a size of a lens. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I just, I'm just going to yeah. give you a scene. You film it the way you're going to film it. Because usually you're filming, you do one side of the thing and the camera's in the same place and you do a little tighter and then you turn around and you wait an hour for the lighting and the thing and it was like, it was hard to make those moments really connect and be reactive in the moment and when you're getting cross coverage, you just, you have to be completely present in the moment, especially when you're working with with all these incredible actors who are going to, you know, improv something, you know, and by the way, just to put this out there, it's also such a joy, not even just because you get to be reactive in the moment, but for the entire crew, it's so efficient. Honestly, by the end of the show, we were kind of like stretching out the days because we didn't want <laughs> the studios to like, you know, cut our funding, but there would be like days where we'd be like, I don't know, you want to do it? You know, and we always had the joke with <laughs> David, our cinematographer, we always had the joke of being like, guys, we got to hurry up. David's got Pilates at 530. We I mean, gotta, that, we that, get that happened to us. <laughs> on Friday Night Lights. It became a real pressure cooker kind of there for a little while. The way that we shot did start, the network started to figure it out. We shot three cameras. <laughs> the editors had to edit all this film and had to figure out, oh, how do we piece this all together? But we were going home at lunch on Friday Night Lights we towards the end too. of season one. And I remember going into season <laughs> two, we were like, okay, we're going to be shooting six-day boards instead of eight-day boards this year. And uh, and that was really an interesting thing. What was season two for you on, on Friday Night Lights? <laughs> What? Two. We're not going to have time to go through all. It's the okay. It's okay. That. I just, uh, just in a nutshell, kind of like what, what the, the reason I want to talk about season Circle two. Circle back because, to the question that I well, had. No, no. I, I mean, go. because we got canceled after season one, or kind of canceled. The fans did a whole thing of sending in light bulbs to NBC. NBC brought us back, and then season two happened, and then the writer strike happened at the end of season two, mm. and there yeah. are a number of storylines that just had to end well we don't talk about season two. we don't talk about se- yeah, season season two is, is definitely i mean i think what happened with, in season two was um season two was a very that was a tough season because <laughs> first of all we had the we had the you know we had the murder storyline that well, people love so much that's and my, my personal day. favorite guys. <laughs> it just and makes so much I sense i felt like we were we were we were finally you know digging ourselves out of that hole from a story perspective, and then uh, the writer strike happened, and the writer strike happened, and it ended. The season ended abruptly, and you know, and also what happened was because we were always so ahead in the writers' room, we had all these story, we had all these scripts that were ready, and so I think Friday Night Lights was one of the. One of the the shows that would that that shot the longest mm-hmm. of after the writer strike because we had so many scripts and they just took them and shot them. Wow! Yeah, because uh, when the writer strike hit, the the room could no longer meet. 
but the scripts that were no, no, the uh, writers couldn't be couldn't do anything on the right. show, but because they're on but strike. The scripts that were already that were already published could be shot. So right. we, so we so yeah. So in any case, so season two was um, it was it was really um, difficult because I felt like we had we had the whole we had the whole re- end of season two. You know, we had it mapped out. We just hadn't written the scripts yet. And therefore, the sh- the shows can be shot. And I remember, you know, having this conversation uh, about you know when the writer strike, you know, ended. And I was like, great, we can finish these. <laughs> we can finish shooting these episodes right now. And they're like, no, no, we're not going to do that. And I was like, oh, okay, well, then we'll start breaking season three. It was like, well, <laughs> not so fast either. <laughs> <laughs> and it was literally like we um, were essentially really canceled after season two. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, there were people, there were certain ne- net network executives that, you know, made public statements that they shouldn't have made about how canceled we were. <laughs> and then um, we were like, um, you know, and then, you know, we had this sort of like miracle um, you know, deal with direct TV that um, kept this that and that kept the show going. And that was, I think, of anything that I've ever done in my career, getting that third season of Friday Night Lights was the most important thing. Like, I felt mm. like if Friday Night Lights ended after season two, it would have probably destroyed me because mm. um, you wouldn't have I wrapped anyone's story. I mean, there every story would nothing be left ended again. right, and plus we had that. We, you know, the fans hated me and hated us. Oh. Well, they didn't hate you guys. They hated me. <laughs> uh, and so, um, you know, like, um, you know, I didn't, I, you know, I was, I was like so painful, the idea that that could have, you know, ended the show. And um, so, you know, and then I feel like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I just feel very grateful that we were able to not only get a season three, um, to sort of right the ship, but then have this whole, you know, this whole other, you know, kind of. Yeah, um, when DirecTV came in, they they said we want we'll we'll carry the load for this many episodes, right? And you broke it down into three seasons. You kind of knew you had a destination to get to, and you could no, tell your go- total third, story. No, they no, they picked up the third season, and uh, and then after they picked up the third season, then they then they picked us up for two more seasons, four and season five. That's pretty incredible. Age. And um, so, did and you know was, it was going to end? Like you could, you knew that the, where, yeah, we when knew the end was, was gonna, coming. We knew that was going to be the five end was going to be so, it. That's you know, you, that was, you work on such good shows that they get canceled and then they get picked up. I mean, it, it is it's happened <laughs> continuously. That's pretty incredible. But I think that's really cool, Katie. Because another thing that you're really amazing, and you know, it's kind of just circling back to the casting and you putting together these teams of people and kind of like what you look for and what's important to you, and yeah. you know, the idea that you care about these people so much, you want them to have. A, an ending that is like worthy of them and I think you did that so beautifully on our shows and I think you know the the groups of people that you put together like I was curious just what what you really looked for when you were putting together the casts of acting. both of these shows yeah acting yeah, wise yeah. I mean I always think kind of lo- you know just I I love you know actors who you I, I don't know how it's hard to describe it but I love actors who fe- who feel real when they're acting like I sometimes like you'll see an actor and they'll and they'll audition a, and for a moment you don't realize that you started the, you started the scene <laughs> you know that's those are the kind of actors I love yeah you know what I mean that just it feels so natural and real and there's an openness to I mean like all of you guys and and so many of these actors I've been lucky enough to work with there is an openness and a trust um and and a willingness to kind of to go there emotionally, mm. you know, I always felt like in a writer's room, it's like, we always were like, you know, we're going to tell the story from inside out, not from outside in, you know, mm. this isn't about story and plot. It's about what these people are going through. Mm. And so with actors, you want the same thing. You want actors who are going to completely lose themselves inside that, that inside that character and be willing to find continually find more 
layers. You know, so like, vulnerable. The thing that I love about television is it's a big story. You're telling a big story. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and if you do like a movie or do a play, you you know, it's like two hours where you tell a whole story in that amount of time. In television, you get to tell a big story. You get to watch people look at like Max mm-hmm. Braverman, totally from the, where he started to where he ended. Yes. Like if you. I just looking at pictures, it's like I know. he grew up. I know. You know, some of those people, some of those kids, like on on Parenthood, they didn't remember life before. Truly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they grew up, you know, and and so you're, so that's what you sort of look for. You're looking for actors that you feel like are going to, you know, kind of evolve and grow, and yeah. get um and and be like and and want to dig in and want to tell those kinds of stories you know to me the thing that i get the most um is thank you for doing that show because it made me feel less alone uh, with what i Mm. was going through you know there was something relatable in every single moment of all those storylines that somebody said that was real that's what it felt like and it felt like you guys were going through it with me and so i i just really i really appreciate you know you changed the trajectory of my entire career all my yeah. acting path and everything well. what we call it the Kadams verse yeah. uh, we had a little crossover <laughs> we've already talked about uh, Jesse Plemons Landry's character showing up at the the studio and yes. and uh, May yeah. and, and him getting to work together and her asking about Tim Riggins the amount of times I accosted you about Taylor Kitsch it's so it's a tale as old as time every <laughs> single episode I was like I know it's oh so God. fascinating um, about Amber but Taylor gonna... but the Kadams verse yes, is we're gonna, gonna get him on yeah absolutely we're, gonna have, we're hoping to. yes oh great but That's... we're gonna we're Gonna string it along for a little. I mean, we can't just let May. Well, just they know I'm gonna quit. To I'm gonna Day quit one. after I um, meet him. That so being they said, have the the Cadence verse just expanded past parenthood. I mean, everything that you've worked on since. I mean, you so incredibly handle coming of age stories. Uh, you do important work, very personal work. Um, what you ask of the actors is to bring their personal life experience. And it sounds like the writers that are in your rooms, uh, you you hope will do the same thing. And I think they all follow your lead because you do that as well. You share your personal experience and you bear yourself in a way that a lot of other showrunners or writers that I've worked with aren't necessarily willing to do. And that's on full display as you watch Max's story through parenthood and, and as we see it on Amazon, which I encourage everybody to go Mm -hmm. see as well is, uh, you know, just incredible and very personal to you. Mm -hmm. And it's a different coming of age story in a way, but again, you watch it and it has that Jason Kadams stamp on it. I, I I mean, it's really important to me that people feel like in terms of people who are working with me, that they feel like they're in a place where, um, they can be artists mm. and they can do what they were sort of born to do. Mm. And then there's like a trust factor, mm-hmm. you know? And so, um, you know, I'm hoping that that, I mean, it really is meaningful to me that you guys are saying you've taken what you have, you've taken from parenthood and taken from Friday Night Lights and you've, and you've, and you use that as you went on in your careers and did other things. Um, you know, that's, that's like, that's very that's like really meaningful to me it's really touching you know and know that i've done the same <laughs> you know like i've definitely tried to um i l- try to keep learning you know and everything that i do mm. and um and you know and and keep doing that and i'm hoping like in terms of just what people take from the shows that we've done like i just hope that it touches them in a way that feels um you know um Almost, a, I, I almost feel like it should feel almost like arresting, like they weren't expecting mm. to feel that. They weren't expecting to feel like to 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 feel so much mm. and to you know sort of relate to something. I mean, that's what I'm hoping these shows do that they they that they provide some sort of way to um, some sort of way to kind of like a. I don't know, connect, I would say. That feeling of safety and connectivity is why we're here today, even talking about all this and why the listeners are out there right now. Um, thank you so much oh, dude, thank for you. coming, Jason, thank and for you, talking uh, to us a little bit. And I, I will not call him Katie. Uh, I'm very you jealous. Can, of, you're not allowed to. Very jealous of the street sign you stole from Dylan uh, on your wall back there. <laughs> and the luncheonette yes. sign you have on your other wall. Don't forget well Amber. Done. Amber rules. Well done. Um, <laughs> yeah. We can't wait to get back to Dylan next week, and we will be continuing on our journey of watching episodes and breaking them down with everybody listening right now. Uh, but before we do that, we want to say thank you and so, uh, so, so, so very many thanks to Jason Katie thank for you. coming. Love you, Katie. And uh, we want to thank you, everybody out there, for listening. Uh, until we see you again, clear eyes, full hearts.
Can't lose. We had to do it. Had to throw it in there. Uh, thank you, Jason. And we'll see everybody next week. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.